Good day, you absolute chad of a human being, or or chadette, or chad them. Welcome back to another video on my channel, the Autism and Mental Health channel. My name is Thomas Henley, and today we're going to be talking about autism and anime. Now you may be thinking to yourself, why, why, why is there any sort of link between these two things? And you, you may also have the thought that, you know, to be honest, my, my child really does love anime and I've never really understood why. Hmm. You may also be absolutely bamboozled by the fact that, you know, anime comes from a different country to the country that you're born in, you know, a Japanese culture with different sort of social rules and different sort of norms and styles and animations. And you may think, you know, for someone who, you know, has a diagnosis where they, they struggle with understanding social concepts, wouldn't it be a lot more difficult, a lot more difficult for, for that autistic child to understand a different culture? 90% of my screen time, you know, the, the time that I'm actually spent uh, watching TV or watching YouTube or watching anything of that nature. It's usually anime that I watch. You know, to be honest, the, the majority of stuff that I do watch tends to be in, informative stuff, tends to be documentaries. But in terms of pure entertainment, I always gravitate towards anime. Now, before you say, well, I did not know that you were a weeb, Thomas. Well, I'm not. I used to be probably, when I was very, very young. But that was because I never felt really a part of society until, you know, I, ne I never really felt understood or, or a part of society or understood socialising or, or communication or social groups until I actually delved into the world of anime. Now, you could say that this is probably not the best place to teach social skills. <laughs> you know, you have a lot of emo emotion and, you know, it's 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 a it's not reality, basically. But for me, during those times when I was really, really depressed, during those times when I was really, really anxious and didn't really know where I, where I fit in with the world, anime was probably one of the, the biggest escapes that I had. And furthermore, I actually started my career in Taekwondo, which I eventually took up to quite a high level in terms of getting a national gold medal, British British national gold medal, junior and senior, as well as competing at the Commonwealth Championships and winning a gold medal. And, <laughs> God, I hate, I hate talking about myself, but I know that it's, it's interesting to some people. So I'm like, probably should say it, but I, I feel like a gigantic narcissist. If I, <laughs> like. So yeah, I, I got a medal, I got a trophy, which was like best, best male fighter. I competed all across the world and com trained and did training camps with gold medalists, Olympic gold medalists. So I took it quite far. And the the anime that really sort of encouraged me to go do that was uh, an anime that you may know, which is Dragon Ball Z. But I'd also say that things like Yu-Gi-Oh! and things like Pokemon were absolutely massive for me during those times. This is because they put a really, really strong focus on core values. You know, things like um, gritting your teeth and, and getting on with it. Things like training hours and hours and hours just for one result and failing and then learning from that failing. Or it could just be something as simple as appreciating the people that you have around you. Appreciating the people that fight with you, people that have your back. And a lot of those core values in anime did a large amount to sort of encourage me to get out of that really poor mental state that I was in and take it out on other people <laughs> in combat sports. Yes, it didn't sound as romantic as as I thought it would, saying it out loud. So I've done a little bit of rambling about my personal uh, love of anime, and there are some key things that I really want to go over that I think, you know, could explain why a lot of autistic people like anime and definitely explains why I have liked and, and do like anime. So, number one. Yes. Indirect exaggeration. Yes, two words, completely meaningless to you. I understand that. 
completely meaningless to me, but I just couldn't think of a better title that fit in my little Instagram post blog, whatever you want to call it. So basically, in an in anime, there is undoubtedly a lot of emotional displays. And, you know, with, with other types of film, TV, it's it's always very subtle, you know. All, all of the characters' intentions, how they feel, they're a lot harder to pick up on. And when you're autistic and you struggle having that cognitive empathy, being able to analyse people's emotional states just by going off indirect things, it makes sense that it that something that exaggerates those things and makes it very apparent is going to make it a much easier watch. And you're going to be able to sort of predict things a lot easier. You're going to be, it's going to be a lot more of a comfortable watch rather than trying to analyze the social situations that are happening. It definitely takes a lot of the guessing work out of it. And although it might not be totally conducive to understanding real life interactions and sort of understanding emotions in the context of a social situation. But that's not really what, what you want from entertainment. Entertainment is supposed to be relaxing and fun. And anime, or to be honest, a lot of modern day cartoons do a really good job of amplifying the emotions of the characters so that it can be visibly seen. It's not subtle. It's straightforward. It's exaggerated. And it's easy to watch. Number two... A cable dropping down there. Number two, <laughs> Japan is different. Yes, if you did not know, it's probably one of the only places that you can go in the world where you could get octopus flavored ice cream or wasabi cookies or like, <laughs> they do a really good job of amplifying the quirky aspects of their culture. And I really like that. The first time that I was actually introduced to what Japan was, was watching a film called The Karate Kid. Uh, not not the new one with Jaden Smith and all that. I like the old school versions, you know, Karate Kid 1, 2 and 3, Mr. Miyagi, Daniel LaRusso, I think that's what you call him. I absolutely binged the absolute mother of God out of that series. <laughs> I'm calling it a series, but it's not a series. It's, a, it's literally like a trilogy of movies. <laughs> At least I think there's three. There might be in a fourth. Oh yeah, with a girl. What's what's she called? It was one with a girl. Or, or is that number three? That's beside the point. I was introduced to both sides of Japan. I really, really, really got into the history. I loved watching things like, I think like the Last Samurai. I think the, one of the first books that I ever read was a was a like a a story of like a samurai whose whose parents got killed and like. Um, they they basically enrolled to become a samurai and they, they trained and they found that their trainer was the person that they were going to seek revenge from. It was a very, very interesting thing. And um, like I really liked... I did, it's not... It may come across as sounding like an insult, but it's not. But I found the the social rules and the social sort of concepts within within. Japanese history within modern Japan within anime just a lot more more straightforward a lot more easier to understand and although you know in film and in in TV and in anime it's it's all exaggerated and it's all part of the plot and it's not reality but whenever I made any friends that were Japanese you know we had like an exchange student who came over and I really I really got on with them and it was one of the first times that I actually felt like a a cool person in a in a social group. I didn't feel like the weirdo or the outsider. You know, they they liked that I was good at taekwondo and that that I was doing well and I was quite academic. And I was like, yeah, of course. Like, why why wouldn't they like me? But all the all the British kids obviously thought that I was weird and quirky and strange, and they didn't want anything to do with me. So this type of culture. I'm not I'm not going to go into too much of it because I'm not a cultural expert and I wouldn't want to say anything over um, what other Japanese people are telling us about their culture. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it as there, leave it as that, and just say that, you know, entering a world which is much different to your own is undoubtedly going to be a massive escape. Um, it's also going to be quite 
um, validating as you, you realize that even though you don't fit into the culture that you're born into, there might be some cultures out there that you really identify with. So that was a really great moment for me. Number three. Yes, we're, we're, I think we've got two more. This is, this is one of the, one of them. The next one's number four. Yes, number three. <laughs> Internal monologues. Yes, so it's it's not always done in all films and all TV series, but I, I have seen quite a few. Uh like I think TV series like Dexter, they have that he has like an internal monologue, which kind of I guess gives sort of a a parallel way of ha- of what he's presenting on the outside and what he's actually feeling on the inside. Uh which you know seems all positive and good and normal on the outside, but inside he's a he's a demon with you know <laughs> Just trying to blend in so that nobody finds out that he's a psycho. So, you know, American, British TV, we sometimes do it. But in in a lot of the animes that I've watched, there is either one of two things. There is either a really strong internal dialogue, particularly if it's surrounding one or two characters like Death Note, you know, with L and... Oh my God, I've forgotten his name. The other guy, Light. <laughs> With those two, that there, there is really strong, like, like internal dialogues from pretty much all of the characters, to be honest. But specifically those, and as well as the internal dialogues, you also have explanations for things. You always have like with, with Pokemon, you know, Ash and Misty go do something, and Brock gives some really bog standard commentary, which <laughs> to a lot of people is quite funny. But for me, little little autistic Tom. Uh, that monologue, it really helped me sort of tie together what was happening. I think in terms of the internal monologues, the actual things that the, they were saying in their heads, it really sort of resonated with me and how I go about my life. You know, you kind of have this picture that most people are kind of going out and they're not really thinking, they're just kind of going in the motions of things. And, you know, from talking to a lot of autistic people, it seems that we have a lot more of that in that internal monologue, those those thinking about what we're going to say. And I know some people don't, which is OK. It's not for the, for the whole of people. I'm not saying every autistic person in general has an internal monologue. Um, this is just something that I've I've heard about quite a lot. You know, us, us kind of going through life and thinking through things and understanding uh, the world around us. It really, really translates well into that idea of an internal monologue, and it makes it a lot easier to follow the story, the characters' intentions, and how they feel. I like that about anime. It's not something that makes me cringe or irk, or it sometimes does get me a laugh, especially with Pokemon. <laughs> I've had some funny, funny times with my mate watching, watching the like, the first ten episodes of Pokemon. Oh my god, <laughs> Brock is such a comedian. It's so funny. So number four, without trying to extend this video as, you know, as far along as I wanted it to, it's only like, it's like 15 minutes recording now. It's not going to be for you because I'm going to chop it down because I talk like a bloody animal. But number four, yes, art styles. <laughs> Just by searching uh, through some of the posts from your favorite autism creators, you'll see that there is quite a wide variety of art styles, quite a wide variety of color choices of, of particular uses of, of certain brushes. You know, you might, might watch some autistic artists or tattoo artists and, you know, they produce stuff which really goes against the idea of what you think a tattoo is or what you think a piece of art is. They really, they really do a good job of personalizing it and making it into something that's very individual. I feel like, you know, the, the, this this kind of thing that I've noticed, um, it's very similar to how anime is, you know, they can be quite creative. <laughs> the ways that they express emotions, the way that they amplify humor through visual effects, or I'm not gonna say effects, but vi visual, changes through through different animation styles it's really really interesting and you know people may say that oh anime is all the same thing it follows the same arc it has the same sort of weird sort of um dynamic where where 
two of the characters are sort of a little bit cl- t- t- a little bit sort of on the edge of being maybe a little bit sort of intimate you know that 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 kind of feeling um but they they actually do have quite a wide variety of anime like different genres like different ways of actually drawing or painting or designing a character different ways of telling the story different characters <laughs> like obviously all film tv they're going to have different characters and ways of telling it but within that genre of anime it does seem like that that you know they can be from different worlds it's like it's all up to the imagination of the people who are creating it so they can make some really out there things i'm thinking of things like neon genesis evangelion which felt more like an art piece <laughs> rather than an anime you've got well, but then you can contrast that with things like one punch man which is like it's taking the concept of being invincible and sort of applying it to a regular old guy's life is absolutely hilarious. And there's all sorts of concepts like that that you can really delve into with anime. And the thing is, is that it's not always to people's tastes. And if people tell you, you have to watch the subbed versions or you have to watch the original versions, don't bloody listen to them. Watch it however you like. <laughs> Honestly, like... Maybe the the thing that I do, I want to be doing is listening to something, and then occasionally glancing at the screen while I'm playing my phone. That tends to be the case when I'm watching anything. So, that you know, you having the dubs, um, usually quite quite helpful for me. But again, you can get you can get some some really weird creative takes on popular TV shows. Just just type in an anime of your choice and what was it you have to they do like a mix around of it that they dub it no they don't dub it um they abridge it (laughs) Yu-Gi-Oh! the abridge series is always one of the like oh my god it's one of the most quoted animes that I've watched and it's not even the original anime it's an abridged version where they just take the make out of it very very funny very hilarious the whole thing with this, this, these types of art styles is that they're very different. They're very quirky. And I always gravitate towards different and quirky things. And a lot of autistic people that I know like to gravitate towards difficult and quirky things. Not difficult. Different. You know, things that, that really open your eyes to the ways that humans can express themselves. I find it really, really interesting. And whenever an anime comes out and it looks to have a different sort of different vibe or different style, I'm always really intrigued by it. The anime that I'm watching at the moment is called Hajime no Ippo, which is um, sort of a series about a kid who's who's pretty pitiful. And then he sort of goes through the ropes, uh, as it be, and he starts to become a boxer. And he sort of learns how to do it, and he does all these amazing things, and he shows all his, his amazing talent. And the boxing, like the actual combat, so well done, honestly. And uh, that's just one of the, th- the things that, I, that I've been watching at the moment. But it's the most standout thing, and there's a lot of seasons, so it's going to be a while before I finish it. But... It is definitely my comfort show at the moment. So I've talked a lot about anime. I've talked a lot about autism and the ways that they can sort of cross over and sort of, I don't know, flip over each other, you know, insert really witty comment. But I don't want to keep you too long. So make sure if you haven't, likey subby, put a comment down below. What's your favorite anime? I want to know. And if you want to stay up to date with things, social media's either side here. I can't remember because it's always flipped when I when I start to edit it. So it's what it's one of these sides. <laughs> Is it that side? Oh, and it, oh, maybe not. No, that side. Hmm. I don't know. But you will find the written versions of pretty much all of the videos that I do over on Instagram, along with a nice little picture that you will recognise from the thumbnail. So very easy to find. And yeah, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and make sure, again, let me know what your anime is and I'll see you in another episode of my YouTube channel. That doesn't sound that doesn't sound too bad. I'm I'm still working on the outros. 
should really put some time into to actually developing it, but I feel like that would that would tarnish my creative style. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs>